Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will continue our discussion on general extrusion inside Simscape multibody. In this video, we will see how we can create extruded solids using MATLAB functions that plot the extrusion cross section. Let's move to Simscape right away. In the last video, we learned how to create regular extrusions as well as general extrusions using coordinate matrices sorted in counterclockwise order. Using the same principle, we can create extrusions from any curve which can be defined mathematically using MATLAB functions. This allows us to generate many complicated extrusions including shapes with gaps inside them. For instance, let's say we want this ring profile extruded, which has a hole at the center with a radius equal to half of its outer radius. We've already defined a function in MATLAB to plot its extrusion cross-section in a way Simscape understands. Now, we will refer to the same function in the solids window under cross-sections. Let's go to general extrusions and type in the name of that function which is make underscore ring and let's say the radius is 400 in millimeters. We'll set the length, that is the thickness of the ring, to be 10 millimeters. And after we hit F5, we can see that the ring profile has been extruded. As a next example, we'll take this parametric link is. The function defined for this is make underscore link. The four arguments are the length of the link, 15, the width of the link, 5, the radius of its holes, 1 and the number of holes 4 in millimeters we'll set a random thickness 2 millimeters after f5 our custom link will be generated as discussed in earlier videos these arguments can also be variables allowing even easier customizations now for the last example we'll generate a circular plate with a hole pattern inside we'll follow the same steps the function for this is uh, draw underscore plate. Uh, the external radius is 40. The radius of the hole is 3. The centerline circle radius is 30. And the number of holes is 7. Okay, and here's the extruded plate. Next, we will learn in detail about how we can create functions like these to extrude other profiles and also profiles with holes inside. But before that, it is important to know why an engineer would ever want to generate extrusions this way when there are dedicated CAD systems available at their disposal where they can model the same thing much quickly and intuitively. Simscape is a tool for simulating physical systems to optimize them before they are implemented in real life, right? But during simulations, multiple and frequent changes in system parameters may be required to explore the entire design space for the systems. The system parameters can also include dimensions of different components. We may want to create an optimum cam profile for a certain mechanism or adjust different link lengths before we reach a certain configuration for that mechanism. Or we may want to vary our dimensions to avoid unwanted interferences between our parts. There's a plethora of possibilities for simulations when we are able to tweak parameters for dimensions. There's no doubt that it's much easier if this change can be done without having to import the CAD file for every iteration. This becomes even more prominent for larger systems with many parts each defined by tens and hundreds of parameters. Okay, uh, using MATLAB functions to plot the cross section is not that different from the method discussed in the previous video because even in this method, Simscape uses a vertices matrix to create the cross section plot. However, in this case, the matrix is generated by computing equations using the arguments provided along with the function. Let's learn how to create cross sections with slots, holes, or any gaps in general. From our earlier discussions on the convention, it's clear that to draw an enclosed cross section, the plot needs to move in the counterclockwise direction. However, in the case of cavities inside of a cross section, we need to move in the clockwise direction. 
Let's understand why. In our first example, we modeled a circular disk with a hole inside. Let's plot that as MATLAB would do it. We're moving in the counterclockwise direction to draw the outer circle. After some time, we'll have to move inward to draw the inner circle. Now, if we decide to keep on moving in the counterclockwise direction, we'll have no way to go to the other side without intersecting the plot. But on the other hand, if we move towards the clockwise direction, we can traverse through the entire plot and define an extrudable cross section. This means if the convention for the outlines was in clockwise direction, the inner lines would have to be drawn in the counterclockwise direction. What we're essentially doing here is leaving a negligible gap to form the complete cross section. So even if it looks like we, we've changed our paths, we're moving along the same path all the way from the start to the end. This means for complicated shapes, we need to plan our paths intricately to successfully generate a plot that Simscape will recognize as a cross section. I've noticed that this feature is very similar to how scalable vector graphics or uh, SVZs are filled with colors, uh, not considering their convention for the direction of vertices though. So the pen tool inside of Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape can come in handy to plan out those profiles before actually writing the code for them. You can make approximate shapes, which may not look good, but will provide you with promising insights on ways to approach different profiles. For example, let's draw our first example here. We move on the outer line in the counterclockwise direction. We move inwards and then try to keep on moving in the counterclockwise direction. We find out that this does not work and then try moving to the clockwise direction next time which in fact works this gives an idea on how we can plot to extrude this profile now let's try to plan out our vertex path for our third example the plate with hole pattern like in the case of the ring we'll have to leave negligible gaps to reach the holes We'll start our path from the outer line and then move inwards, going counterclockwise in the outer section and vice versa in the inner sections. We'll come back to the outer lines and repeat the process until we get an extrudable cross section for our profile. Okay, so we'll generate three plots, one for the holes, one for the lines connecting the outer line to the inner line and the last one for the outer circle. We'll then sort them in such a way that we'll be able to follow the path that we planned. Let's try to understand what each section in the code is doing. We'll start by defining the function draw underscore plate, which will take in uh, arguments r, small r, spread, and n. It will return the value inside the variable plot underscore data. If the user does not provide any arguments, the function will use these values. Next, we create a figure in the base workspace using the file name, but only if no figure exists in the base workspace with that same name. Then we'll define and initialize our variables. This section generates the coordinates for centers of the end holes. Then we'll generate the outlines for the holes as well as the lines connecting outline to the inner lines for all orientation.
We'll now offset the holes and the lines with respect to the coordinates of hole centers. Now all that's left is to sort these two variables in the order that we planned before and store the final coordinates in the output variable plot underscore data. And finally, we can visualize the output using the functions plot and patch. The patch is a very useful tool to see which area of the plot Simscape will recognize as a cross section. For the final check, let's plot our graph in slow motion and see whether it behaves in the way that we planned.